Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to the next video in the AWS Amplify playlist. In the last video, we customized the default Amplify UI authentication component to add our site's logo and the copyright. However, when we log in and then view the contacts, we're shown a static list of hard-coded contacts. In this video, we'll remove those hard-coded contacts and add an Amplify GraphQL API and S3 storage so we can create new contacts, then display them dynamically. To get started, I'll jump into VS Code and then delete the second and third hard-coded contacts in the contacts component. I'll save the file, then jump back into the browser and make sure the first contact is still displayed. Then back in VS Code, below the contact, I'll add a new row for a form to add a new contact. Now, before I could save the page and jump back into the browser, I need to import form and button as well. So now I'll save the page and go back to the browser and we see our new add contact form. Now in the form elements, I wanna be able to bind the input elements to properties in the React contact component. So to do that, I'll give each of the elements a value and set them equal to a property of a contact data object. In this case, the contact data's name. I'll do the same for the email and the cell. The last form control is a type of file that will be used to upload the contacts profile pic. In this case, I won't set a value but later we'll come back and bind an onChange event handler to deal with the uploaded file. For now, I'm going to jump back up to the contacts function declaration and add a new constant for the contact data, which will use React state. The initial state will be set to an object with name, email, and cell properties set to empty strings. And now back down in the form fields, I could add onChange event handlers for the input fields which will take an event and then call the set contact data function, passing it the spread with the initial contact data, then in this case, setting the name property equal to the events targets value. So whatever value the user types into the field for the contacts name. I'll do the same for the email and for the cell. Then I need to jump up to the top of the page and import use state from React. Now I'll save the page, go back to the browser to make sure there are no errors. Refresh, and it looks good. However, if I fill out the form, and then click the Add Contact button, nothing happens because I haven't bound the on-click event handler to the button yet. So let's jump back into VS Code and do that now. So in the button, I'll add the onClick handler and call an add new contact function. In the function, I want to create a constant which will hold the new contacts data. Then create a new constant for a new contact which will have an ID generated by the UUID package that we'll install, a name, email, cell, and a profile pick path. Then ultimately, we'll persist the new contact in the back end. Now, the value for the profile path is going to be a key into S3 storage where the profile picture will live. And in order to get that, we'll have to upload the pic to S3. And that will require use of Amplify's storage component. So let's jump back into a terminal and first install the UUID package and then execute Amplify Add Storage. The content type will be for images, audio, video, etc. I'll provide a friendly name of contact storage and a bucket name of contact storage. Only authenticated users should have access and I'll grant create, update, and read operations and then say no for a Lambda trigger on the S3 bucket. 
and then I'll push the changes. And here we see there's no change to the auth component and the storage component will be created. Now we could jump back into VS Code, jump to the top and import storage from Amplify. Then down in the add new contact function, we'll configure storage to use for me the US East one region, and then it create a constant for the key, which will call put on the storage object, passing it a UUID with a dot ping extension for the object's key, a profile pick variable, which we'll declare in a second, and then set the context type to the image ping. Now, you can see the await is underlined here because this is an asynchronous call. So we'll add async to our arrow function. Then I'll create a new constant for the profile pick, which uses state of an empty string. Then down in the form, in the file element, I'll add a non-change event handler, which takes the event, gets the target files, zeroth element and uses it to set the profile pick. After this call returns, the key will be used to set the value of the contact's profile pick path. Now, to persist the new contact, we need to create an Amplify GraphQL API. So let's jump over to the terminal and execute Amplify Add API. The type will be a GraphQL API. I'll give it a name. Continue. This will be a single object with fields. And say yes to editing the schema now. So in VS Code, under the Amplify Backend API Contact API folder, there's a schema.graphql file, which currently defines a default to do model. So I'll change this model from to do to contact. Each contact will have an ID, a name, which is required, an email, which is also required, a cell, and a profile pick path. So now I'll go ahead and save the schema, then jump back over into a terminal and push the changes. Here we see the API will be created, so I'll go ahead and confirm. I'll say yes to generate the code for the API. The type will be JavaScript. I'll take the default for the GraphQL query patterns. Say yes to generate the GraphQL operations. Take the default. And with that complete, we could jump over to the AWS console, go over to DynamoDB, into tables, and we now see a new contact table created for the API to interact with. And while we're here, if we jump over to S3, go into buckets, we'll see our new contacts bucket for holding the profile pictures. Now we could jump back over to VS Code, and if we scroll down under source, we'll see a GraphQL folder and inside a mutations.js file. And the mutations contains the methods for creating updating and deleting contacts. And if we looked at the queries.js file, we'll see this has the methods for querying the data. There's a get contact and a list contacts. So now if we jump back into the contacts component, we can add the code to persist the contact, which again is an asynchronous function. It'll use the API to call a GraphQL function, which takes a GraphQL operation to create a contact with input, which will be the value of the new contact. So let's jump back to our storage import from Amplify and add API and GraphQL operation. I'll save the file and go back to the browser. And we see I'm missing a couple imports, one for UUID and one for create contact. So let's jump back into VS Code and fix those. 
So here I'll import create contact from the GraphQL mutations and also import UUID. Now let's go back to the browser, refresh the page, and it loads successfully. So let's try and add a new contact. I'll click add contact. Then if we go back to the AWS console into S3, we now see our profile picture was updated. And if we go to DynamoDB, we now see a new row for the contact we just added. However, on the contacts page, we're still seeing the hard-coded contact. So let's jump into VS Code and fix that to display the dynamic data that we just uploaded for our contact. First, I'll create a constant to hold all the contacts. Then a get contacts function, which will be an asynchronous call to the API. And since this is an asynchronous call, I want to wrap all the code in a try catch. And actually, let me do the same for add new contact. Okay, that's better. Now back up in our get contacts function, we'll create a constant for contacts data, which will make a call to the API's GraphQL method, passing a GraphQL operation and invoking the list contacts method. And for now, we'll just log the contact data to the console. Now to invoke the get contacts function, I'll use a use effect hook from React, call get contacts once on page load. So I need to jump back up to the imports and import use effect from React. Now I'll save, go back to the browser. Oh, and I forgot to import list contacts. So let's do that real quick. So here I'll import list contacts from GraphQL queries, save the page again. Now go back to the browser and we'll see on page load in the console, the data with one item, which has the value from the database for the contact we created. So we're definitely headed in the right direction here. So let's jump back into VS Code and work on finishing this up. Back in the get contacts function, the next thing I want to do is take the contacts data, grab its data property, then list contacts, and then the items, and use those to create a value for a new contacts list constant. Then I'll call set contacts, passing it the contacts list. Then if we scroll down to the code that's displaying the contact, here I want to loop through all the contacts, each time through getting a contact and an index, and then replace the hard-coded values with the properties from the contact. So here I'll replace the hard-coded name with the contact name, do the same for the email and the cell. And then I need to make sure to return the call. Now let's save the page, go back to the browser, and we see our dynamically populated element. Now the image is still coming from the hard-coded path to the image in our project folder. So we're gonna jump back into VS Code and fix that to use the image that was uploaded to Amplify Storage. And we'll also get rid of this error message which says each child in a list should have a unique key prop. So first to get rid of the error, I'll add a key property to the call which value is the index of the map. Now let's jump back up to the top and in get contacts, what I wanna do is loop through the contacts, then each time through, create a new constant, which will hold the path to the contacts profile pick. Then I'll call storage.get, passing it the profile pick with an expiration of 60 seconds to get the image in S3. Then I'll call set profile pick paths passing it the spread of the current profile picks path and then appending the new profile pick path URI. So I'll have to create a new constant for the profile pick paths, which after this code executes will be an array of all the contacts profile pictures in S3. Now I'll scroll back down to the code that's displaying the contacts and change the source from the hard coded contact ping to go to the profile picks path array passing it the index for the contact. Now, if we save this code and go back to the page and inspect the image, 
we'll see the image is now coming from S3. Now, the last thing I'd like to show you is if you'd like to clean up your environment after following along with these videos, you can execute an Amplify Delete to remove all your Amplify resources. So here, I'll go ahead and say yes. Now, this will take a while, so I'll pause the video until it's done. Now, with the delete complete, we could jump back into the AWS console, refresh buckets, and you'll see we no longer have any buckets. If we go to DynamoDB and refresh tables, we see we no longer have our table. If we go to Cognito and manage user pools, we see we no longer have our user pool. And if we go to the Amplify console, click on all apps, we'll see we no longer have our Amplify app. So that concludes this video on adding Amplify storage and a GraphQL API to our app for persistent contact data. Since this series focused on Amplify and not building a front end app, I didn't get into form validation or displaying potential error messages on the web pages. If you'd like to see how those could be implemented in React, or you'd like to see additional CRUD operations implemented via the GraphQL API, feel free to leave a comment and I'll work on creating those videos after I add the video on replacing the default Amplify UI auth component with our own login and register React components. Finally, if you found this series useful, please consider liking the videos and subscribing to the channel if you'd like to be notified when I release more content. Thanks for watching.